everybody. I'm Chris McGee, broadcasting from our Spectrum Sportsnet studios in El Segundo, California, as we take a look at the starting lineups for your Los Angeles Lakers coming in at 49 and 14. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, Danny Green, and sliding into that spot that was once occupied by Avery Bradley will be Contavious Caldwell Pope. And for the Mavericks, sitting in the seventh spot in the Western Conference, a record of 40 and 27. Tim Hardaway Jr., Kristaps Porzingis, Seth Curry, and they are led by sophomore sensation all star Luka Doncic wearing the number 77 jersey. The man in charge of the Lakers in his first campaign at 49 and 14, Frank Vogel, he and his staff have done an outstanding job this season. And he is up against one of the best in the game in his 11th year with the Mavericks. Won a title in 2011, coach of the year in 2002, Rick Carlisle. And I am not alone. Well, physically, I'm by myself. I'm in the trailer out in the parking lot where Stu and Bill are going to be. But joining me in the studio, big game James Worthy, the Hall of Famer, Laker insider Mike Bresnahan, studio anchor Allie Clifton, Mike Trudell will be across the hall in the green room. And guys, it's a social distance broadcast, and we're going to have fun. Big game, James. I know it's just a scrimmage, but you, me, Laker fans, we don't care. We're beyond elated to be back. Yeah, yeah, the fans and, you know, just about everybody in America uh, needs sports. And we're about to see the beginning uh, of a season. There's LeBron James. Got a little gray in the beard. I like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Giddy, we've been waiting for this, whether they're fans in, in, the, in the seats or not. I'm excited. Big game. I haven't seen you in four and a half months, and I still can't <laughs> see you because you're in the studio and I'm in the parking lot, but I'm okay with it. And you mentioned LeBron James. What a season he's having. His second with the Lakers, his 17th overall. Many think he is right there for the MVP. It's a battle between he and Giannis. And we are ready to tip it off, guys, for the first time in 135 days. Dallas and the Lakers from the NBA campus in Orlando. Seth Curry, brother of Steph, getting the start, wearing the number 30 jersey. They all do in the Curry family. Goes back to the Dell days. Charlotte. Porzingis into the lane, gets the first bucket. And your first look at the Lakers. Last time they played, March 10th at Staples Center. Danny Green in the corner. Big game. If you're Frank Vogel and that staff, what do you want to see out of today? Well, you know, it's, it's been a, a lot of time away from the game. You want to see uh, how guys are playing together. You know, less turnovers. You got you to see if, if they're able to run offense properly, defense properly. You're looking to see just how quickly they can get in sync and, and, and do what the coaches have asked them to do. You're not looking for a whole lot of offense, not a whole lot of excitement. You're just looking to see if the team can connect and if they understand the principles that's been set out before them. Frank Vogel said you will see LeBron and AD in the first half, and you just got your first look at Anthony Davis. A little face up, and he knocked down the jumper. There's Seth Curry, and he hits his second three in a row, and it's an 8-2 Dallas lead. Seth Curry averaging over 12 points a game for Dallas. He's at 45% from three, second best in the NBA behind George Hill. And AD. Ooh. Mismatch mid-range, got it for 8-4. I don't know about you all, but I've kind of missed seeing that from AD, that little uh, fade away. God, he's so good from 18 to 20 feet. Again, I told you, I didn't go out on a limb too far picking him as a take your <laughs> shot, but he looks good so far. Also, what you said about him finally probably being 100% healthy, having some time off to, 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 to achieve that. Yeah, James, remember like earlier in the season, he kept kind of touching his shoulder. He, he kind of tweaked it a little bit, stretched it a little bit. Kind of bothered him for, for quite a few weeks. But he says he is 100% right now. Dallas on fire from three early. Luka getting in on it. And you saw LeBron James, who leads the league in assists at 10.6 per game, drop one off for JaVale and scores 11-6. Donchus and Porzingis. Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks building their future around those two. Pretty good twosome right there. It's not bad, Brass. Yeah, by the way, this game is seven minutes left. It, it might seem a little uh, more quickly, uh, going a little more quickly than it really is. Ten-minute quarters for this only this first scrimmage game. 
And then uh, they bump up to 12 minute quarters for the second and third scrimmages. Gotta love the start, Allie, from JaVale McKee. He, another one who said he felt good coming in. You know, many people were concerned about his asthma and being sure. down in the bubble. And he said he has done everything up to this point to stay healthy, to stay in shape. And he looks like it out there. Guys, another thing I've been like watching closely, though we love hoops. It actually, there's good noise in there. You know, I was right? going to say the same thing. I piped it in a little bit. Is that is that what we're we're experiencing, Gator? It sounds real. Yeah, they're piping it in, guys, and I'm sure you've been watching uh, soccer overseas. They've been doing that uh, as well as MLS, and uh, it, it's you know the fans are kind of liking it. You've seen it with baseball as well, and I think that's that's what we're going to see, James. Uh, you know, different sports trying different things, trying to engage the fans. Yeah, you know, it's when, unprecedented territory, guys. When you're on the floor, I mean, you have so much to focus on that you really aren't looking into the crowd. Maybe if there's a free throw or something like that. So the sound should sound real and a little familiar to them, hopefully. I'll tell you, after 135 days, not much rust with these two teams. Remember, Dallas was the last game completed back on March 11th. They beat the Nuggets 113 to 97 as Luka lobs it up for Kristaps Porzingis and he throws it down. And the foul, when we come back, Porzingis will be shooting one. LeBron James, your league leader in assists, dropping off a dime for JaVale. Chris and of course you've already seen him slotted into that starting lineup and that is a place where he grew pretty comfortable earlier in the season remember that Bradley had the hairline fracture in November he missed 18 games in which KCP started then came back for a couple um, Kenny ended up starting a couple more in January and gear the biggest difference in those games the offense LA just rose up the shot uh, the chart there in terms of how they were playing on that end of the floor ranking fourth in offensive efficiency they did drop some defensively as you see green hitting the three and so that's the place where Avery Bradley you just can't replace that 94 feet of defense that he gives you but on the other end you get that spacing which benefits of course when you have LeBron and AD uh, on the floor there it's important to have that shooting and that's something that Pope did really uh, really well throughout the season you know Mike one thing that people don't really see in the box score is what Avery Bradley does on the perimeter chasing around often the best player on the opposing team I go back to that Clipper game it was such a, a big game for the Lakers because they had lost to them uh, the first two times Christmas and on opening night he was guarding Lou Williams at the end he also hit what five or six threes and had that fantastic game yeah, no question about it, and that's where they're going to miss him. And also just the mentality he brings, Chris. Uh, when you have somebody that's the first defender that the defense, that the offense, I should say, is seeing, that sets the tone throughout the rest of the roster. So it is going to be tricky to replace him on that end. Although they do have Alex Caruso, uh, and who can help off the bench defending a lot of point guards as well. But offensively, Gita, really, uh, that's where the Lakers may have even an uptick on that end, just because of the spacing that Caldwell Pope provides. Uh, that's something that is, as Brez mentioned in the pregame show, the Lakers weren't great shooting as the season went on, but this should help having KCP out there more regularly. Yeah, and Mike, you look at that number, the one that matters. With KCP in the starting lineup, the Lakers were 17-3. and three. You mentioned the offense. He shot 43% from three in those 20 games. That's huge. Yeah, and of course, it's always a little bit easier uh, when you're playing more minutes with LeBron. But if you're playing with LeBron, and sure, AD on the floor with him as well, you're going to get plenty of open looks. And that's one thing, KCP, really good catch-and-shoot player this season, something that's going to benefit them as AD gets a little short there. Yeah, AD wide open from the top. AD shooting very well from three in 2020, much better than he did in 2019 as Seth Curry drops another three ball, his third of the game. Four for five from three, the Mavericks. Nine points for Curry, 19-14 Dallas. Danny Green catch and shoot from the corner. He knocks it down. Very familiar spot for Dallas fans. They remember November 1st after that lovely screen by Dwight Howard. Maybe a hold. Danny Green hitting the three to send that game to overtime. That was one of the more fun games of the year, Allie. Oh, a steal by AD. My choice for Defensive Player of the Year. And big game, James, what are you seeing so far in this first quarter? It's been 135 days since both teams have played. Well, I, I, I think you're seeing guys who are, are, are eager to get back. You know, it, it, their, their season was disrupted uh, like everyone else. And, you know, I, I think they're eager to play against uh, another team. 
and finally get their season underway, getting the jitters out of the way. And uh, but so far it looks so good. Look like both teams have been well kept, and you know, uh, exercising what the coach wants them to do out there. Hope they can sustain it. Allie, get your first look at Kyle Kuzma. We talked a lot about him over the last few months and how important he's going to be to this Laker basketball team. I mean, I'm excited, too, just over the last couple of days as Coach Vogel has been talking about how he has dominated in training camp. You know, there were, there were moments where he was going 9 of 10 in games, um, just very efficient from the floor. It's the confidence that we all know, right, guys, that Kyle Kuzma does not lack, but it's the opportunities. He says it. He's a rhythm player. He needs the opportunity, and it sounds like that's coming his way. Yeah, Allie, if, if KCP is maybe the X factor for this team, you know, if he plays well between now and mid-October uh, as a starter, the Lakers are going to be in really good shape. If he's the X factor, I think Kuz is kind of the Y factor. I mean, he, he kind of struggled a little bit in the last six weeks before the league suspended play. Wasn't really hitting his three ball that well. Averaging only 11 points it, it, it leading up to the, uh, the shutdown over that last month and a half. But if he can rediscover his game, which, you know, Frank Vogel has given us pretty strong indicators is happening in this abbreviated restart training camp, that will be a good sign for the Lakers. And while we have a moment, let's pause for a word from Jack in the Box. The new Monster Angus Thick Burger at Carl's Jr. Feed your happy. I wish we had him. And that was Carl's Jr. Not Jack in the Box. That was Boban in the game. Arjanovic. Some of you might know him from John Wick 3. <laughs> you ever meet him, Geek? You, you know everyone. Do you know Boban? I've met Boban once. Boban, one of the great guys in the NBA. One of the most popular guys in the NBA. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Not surprised Geek met him. Knows him. Probably had dinner and drinks with him, too. I wouldn't go that far yet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's pretty effective uh, if you let him get in his sweet spot, which is in the paint, offensive rebounds. He looks like he's gotten himself in incredible shape. I haven't seen that type of uh, definition in his upper body since he's been in the league. James, that last game that was played back on March 11th, that was completed, Nuggets versus Dallas. Boban went for 31 and 17. Porzingis did not play that game. He was resting his sore knee, so Boban absolutely can get it done. As KCP does a nice job of getting in the lane and throwing it up for Anthony Davis. Sure doesn't look like, I know, Geter, you mentioned it right off the top. Not a lot of rust, but it sure doesn't look like the Lakers have skipped a beat. No, Dallas as well. I mean, Dallas, one of the best offenses in the league. We'll get into that in a moment as LeBron runs into Luka. There's KCP getting into the lane, and he's gotten better at that this year. Driving, navigating, and making the right pass. That is not Doncic, actually. That's LeBron. Running into Maxi. Kleba. Danny Green, Danny Green high off the glass. Is he kind of the forgotten Laker? We've talked so much about KCP needing to step up. How are LeBron and AD going to look? Uh, you know, Deion Waiters and J.R. Smith, can they help at all? We haven't talked a lot about Danny Green. He just keeps doing good things on the court for the Lakers on both sides of it. Because I argue that the expectation is just there. It'll never change. It's kind of we baked expect in. Danny to step up in big moments, to hit shots, and to defend. And I think he's always done that. Yes, you know, he's proven himself. We know what we're going to get out of him over his career. And the two guys that really we haven't seen that, right. Pope, Kuz, they're the guys that have to prove themselves. Danny is he's a proven factor, especially in the playoffs. And guys, KCP went back to the locker room. Ooh, with Quinn Cook getting that opportunity. We'll try to keep everyone updated on that. You see LeBron James. And we're going to break. We'll be back in a moment. Lakers Mavericks from Orlando, 21-20. is to eat it. Welcome back to the campus in Orlando, the NBA bubble. I'm in El Segundo. I'm Chris McGee. As you look at LeBron James, he looks fine. The last time we saw the Lakers in action was four and a half months ago. 
Lakers record, 49 and 14, second in the NBA behind Milwaukee. They were 8 and 2 post All Star break, had won 11 of 13 games, but here's the important one third in defensive rating, fourth in offensive rating, second in points in the paint, and fast break, big game, James. Pretty impressive numbers from this Lakers squad. Very impressive, you know, and uh, the victories over Milwaukee and then the Clippers. You know, it took a little time. You know, we had the talent, but it takes time to jail with Avery Bradley, LeBron's leadership, uh, you know, AD. Collectively, they were starting to look like a championship team. The Lakers now with the lead, 23-20. They're shooting 60%, 9 from 15 from the field. J.J. Barea, longtime Dallas Mav. Coming off that screen. There's Boban. Rebound LeBron. And AD goes up with the left. He's fouled by Boban. He'll go to the line. One thing, Ali, that's been so impressive about Anthony Davis is his ability to knock down free throws. He's the best free throw shooter on this Laker team. What did he make at, at one point? 26 of 26? It, it, for a big man, it, it was an unbelievable number. He, I mean, just his size, his athleticism, his ability right there. You know, big game, you were talking about Boban and just how good he looks physically and in shape. And on the defensive end, when you're trying to basically take him out of what he does well, you do your work early, right? You get him off the block as well as you can. But offensively, when he's defending you, we just saw AD. It was a clinic. You use your foot, your foot speed, your quickness to get to the rim. A AD's, one of his specialties is he's really good at recognizing who's guarding him. You know, he knows when he can shoot the fadeaway jumper. He knows when he can take uh, a guy and drop step on him. So, yeah, just recognizing how someone's defending you, it's, it's, it's not a matchup. Boban's no match for AD. He's got too many skills. Perea in trouble. Shot clock expiring. He lets one fly. Jared Dudley, everyone's favorite teammate, with the rebound. Deion Waiters. Waiters step back. And Waiters. Eater, a walking there it bucket. Is. Philly cheese is what they call it. Waiters Island, Philly cheese. <laughs> Step back, got it. 9-0 run for the Lakers, 26-20. Here's Quinn Cook. He's in transition. Coos in the short corner, drives, kicks it to Waiters. We call it ball movement. A little too unselfish. And Waiters misses there. I want to bring in Mike Trudell and have a conversation about Kyle Kuzma. Yeah, Geeter. So Kuz this year, it's been a really interesting season for him. Remember, before the season started, he was on Team USA, missed all of training camp after he hurt his foot, and didn't get going until the fifth game actually against Dallas was his debut. So it took him a while to get into a rhythm, get healthy, and then, of course, he has LeBron and AD ahead of him. But Frank Vogel said he's been looking terrific in the scrimmages so far at practice, uh, just in the practice weeks. Kuz says he's fully healthy. There's some upside there that remains for Kuz here uh, as he tries to find a rhythm. We'll see how he looks in these scrimmages, Peter. Yeah, Mike, I think you bring up some great points there. And Kuz with that slow start. And listen, a lot of expectations on Kuz as well. Remember, this is a different team than it was the last two years with championship aspirations. Uh, he's a young guy that's used to getting the ball a lot, starting, getting a lot of minutes. And, and, and now you got to fill a role and, and find out how you fit with the team. And Chris, one thing to keep in mind with Kuz also, you know, you have no Rondo in the second unit to, to run the plays and, and do that sort of thing in terms of secondary ball handling. You'll see some of that from Kuz and AD also. It's not just going to be the guards like Russo, like Waiters. Uh, those guys can make plays in the half court as well. First quarter winds down. Dion Waiters say hello to Los Angeles Lakers and their fans. Waiters <laughs> with another three. And a little pose at the end. Dwight loves it. The fellas love it. And the fans have been waiting for a chance to see Dion Waiters in a Laker uniform. And not a bad start. Waiters. Back-to-back -back bombs. AD face up. Got it. Lakers lead 29-22.
And we're back, Lakers Mavericks from the NBA campus in Orlando. Mavericks started six of seven. Since then, they've gone one for seven. Lakers closed the first on a 15-3 run. They lead 29-22, and here's how the first quarter ended. And Brez, I know you've been waiting for this. Dion Waiters, <laughs> hoisting and feasting. Who knew? I mean, just two short years ago, he averaged 14 points and four assists, played 31 minutes a game, too. So he has it in him. This season has not been one to remember for him. He's played only three games. I guess the good news for him and the Lakers, in those three games, he played 42 minutes and scored 28 points combined. So he can fill it up, and he sure did at the end of that first quarter right there. And, Ali, I guess a question coming into Orlando without Avery Bradley, there's some minutes to go around as to see Quinn Cook get fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two by Seth Curry. Well, who's going to get those minutes between Waiters and J.R. Smith? J.R., you've known for a long time covering him in Cleveland. Yeah, I, you know, I just think that the difference between the two of them is Dion is actually a guy that could run your offense, and, and he could be a, he, he's a playmaker. So not only does he hit shots, but he's also a playmaker, and so he kind of possesses the versatility there, where JR is a guy who comes in, he hits shots, he can turn the, the energy of a game just like that because he can get hot. Uh, he can get you six to eight threes in a, a matter of minutes. Um, so I just think it's going to be what the Lakers need out of the two of them. I agree. I agree. <laughs> what they need at that time, obviously, if Waiters is a distributor, you know, that's something that uh, they, they would love to, to have. And I think it depends on probably to the defensive matchups, you know, what's going on uh, on the defensive end, if, if, if they're being taken advantage of or if they're able to defend uh, someone and, and, and be uh, abrupt. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's like you said, Ali, it's whatever they need. They're very versatile. James, how much does it matter that Dion signed with the team back in March? Didn't play for the Lakers, but sat on the bench for a couple of games, kind of got to know the terminology and, and that sort of thing, as opposed to J.R. Smith, who was just picked up a couple weeks ago. Does that, does that give Dion that much more of an advantage? A little bit. I mean, uh, uh, you know, Waiters has been around the system. You mm -hmm. know, he's been here. He kind of knows what's going on. He's talked to the coaches and the GMs and kind of knows what, uh, you know, is expected of him. J.R. is coming in. And, you know, he'll probably be under LeBron's wing. And, right. and LeBron will probably be the one that will, you know, bring him in and, and tell him what's happening. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, JR's been around long enough to kind of pick up the pieces pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, don't, I don't expect a, a huge disadvantage there. You know, one thing you look at when you see JR Smith is experience. And you can't yeah. put a price on that. Playing alongside LeBron James. Winning a championship. Being on the big stage. And you're hoping that JR... Uh, can bring that to this Laker team as Rick Carlisle is showing us our first challenge here in the bubble. Seth Curry saying, I did not touch Quinn Cook. Call stands. So Quinn Cook will be going to the line 29 to 22. Lakers have faced the Mavs four times this season. They're three and one. The Mavs win was at Staples back in early December. You see J.R. Smith signed on July 1st for the NBA restart. And Allie, after have to remember, he's top 13 all time and three-pointers made as well. So J.R. can hit a shot. <laughs> he can hit a shot, Geeter, but he can hit a shot when the pressure's on. He's done it in the bright lights. He's done it in a game seven of an NBA Finals on the road. Don't forget that. Three straight threes to start the third quarter. Kind of changed the tide there in 2016. Uh, but he, you he had to get that in, didn't you, Ali? 3 1 <laughs> lead. Warriors had a 3 1 lead. What, I, I, when I are you going to say that? I know there's a reason why you sent me that question, <laughs> so I had to deliver for you. With that said, I just see a lot of similarities still, though, between he and Deion Waiters. There's two of the new guys that we're looking forward to seeing um, because of that one aspect. They love the bright lights. They love those kind of moments and situations, and they love to hit and take, take and hit, I should say, the tough shots. Yeah, I, I think it's the right pieces. You know, everybody talked about LeBron and AD being the nucleus, and we got Danny Green, uh, you know, Avery Bradley. Unfortunately, he's not going to be with us. But when you bring in two, you know, veteran players, J.R. Reed and Waiters, they've been around. They're not afraid to play the game. You know, they know what to expect on the road and at home. And uh, they don't mind, you know, being in the big light. So I, I think it's another example of the Lakers, you know, kind of padding on to what they need as, as they go into the playoffs. 17 to 3 run. Uh, Mike Trudell is going to join us right now with a KCP update. What do you got, Mike? 
Yeah, Geeter, so he rolled his ankle, uh, but the report is that he's okay. Uh, he went to the back just to get looked at by the training staff, and he's now back on the bench. Frank Vogel can choose to put him back in if he so chooses. So again, rolled ankle, uh, but it is thought that he is just fine. All right, nice report there, Mike. I appreciate that. You getting that report while being an El Segundo <laughs> is also equally as impressive. Mike Trudeau has sources. Our first look at Dwight Howard in the game. Dwight making that late decision to join the Lakers in Orlando. Nice closeout but by Waiters, but the shot still falls. Three-pointer good, 31-27. Kristaps Porzingis now with eight points. Porzingis looks great. And Mike Trudell, this Dallas team on pace for the second best offensive rating in NBA history behind the 2018-19 Warriors, just currently ahead of the 86-87 Lakers. They have been so efficient, so impressive, and they're doing it while being 18th in pace. Yeah, just blistering are the Mavericks, Geeter, and that's going to be a tricky matchup uh, for whoever they end up seeing in the first round. You know, right now, they are the seventh seed, so they do have a chance to move up a couple of spots depending on how things shake out because it's pretty tight. It's pretty packed between uh, kind of three, two, uh, three through seven there, so somebody's going to get this Dallas Mavericks uh, squad in the first round and not be pleased. Now, it will very, very unlikely be the Lakers who are basically a shoe-in to get the one seed, Chris. Uh, if, even if the Clippers go 8-0, the Lakers only would have to win three games out of their eight uh, to secure that. So, so you have to think they feel pretty good about the lead they've built at this point. In big game, I want to bring you in. One of the reasons why, one of the big reasons why Dallas is back in the playoff hunt and making to look a big, uh, to making to looking to make a big jump excuse me is because of Luka Doncic I mean what he's been able to do in his second season not just a Dallas fan favorite but a favorite among anybody who watches the NBA so good so crafty light years ahead of most people at this time yeah yeah Luka is to Dallas what you know uh, LeBron is to the Lakers or to what Kawhi is to the Clippers he's their leader and he's young but he doesn't play like he's young with that international experience that he's picked up before he came to the States. This kid is, uh, he's on his way to being great, a triple triple threat guy, uh, can, can do just about anything. And, and he looks like he does it in, you know, in second gear. You know, he's just a <laughs> phenomenal, smart player. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Dallas is uh, nice to have him and definitely a reason that they're where they are, playoffs. Dwight Howard makes the first free throw. LeBron James back into the game. And I think back to November 1st, that epic game. Lakers won in overtime, 119 to 110. And LeBron and Luka became the oldest, youngest triple-double in the same game with over 30 points and 15 assists. It was just an epic battle. LeBron went for 39, 16, and 12 rebounds. Luka went for 31, 15 assists, and 13 rebounds. That's the game Danny Green hit the game-tying three at the buzzer. But Luka, already a star. And now teamed up with Porzingis as he comes down and hammers one. And it's all tied up at 31. Doncic now has 11 points and three assists. And Frank Vogel wants to call a timeout after a 9-0 run. Peter, I argued a one Excuse me, hold on, Brez. Yeah, that scores 32-31. And Brez, we'll come back to you on the other side. We got to go to break with the Lakers. And we're back as we take a look at the Western Conference standings. The Lakers at the top with a five-and-a-half game lead with eight to go. The Clippers in that second spot. You go down and you look at Dallas, three games behind Houston, well ahead of Memphis. So the Dallas Mavericks will be going to the playoffs. That Clippers-Mavericks first-round series will be awfully fun. And the Lakers uh, looking to secure that top seed probably early on in the eight-game reseeding process. Brez, I'm going to get you back in. I know you had something to say right before we went to break. Yeah, sorry, I was so rude, kind of cut into what you were trying to do, Chris McGee. But never, never. I, <laughs> I argued on one of our shows the other day that Luka Doncic might be the league's most improved player. There are some pretty good candidates out there. Uh, Brandon Ingram, Bam Adebayo, 
But I really think that Luca had a great rookie year, averaged about 21 points a game. But now he's 29 points a game and almost getting a triple double on top of it. So for my money, he, he is the, uh, the most improved player in the NBA and also uh, voted an all star starter uh, for the first time this season. Yeah, you made a great argument that day. We had Kevin Ding on the show. I was voting for Brandon Ingram, but you definitely made a case for Luca. And there's a number of players who just continue to improve. That's the beauty of the NBA is Kyle Kuzma gets to a spot, hits the mid-range jumper, 34-31. Kuz now on the board. There's that pick and roll. Doncic the crossover. Kicks it out. Hardaway Jr. short. And Porzingis arguing his case. Mike Trudell, I'd like to bring you in. The Dallas Mavericks, we talked about their efficiency, and a lot of the changes came when Porzingis started playing more of the five and running that pick and roll with Luka. Yeah, it just creates so much spacing for them, Geeter, and that's something that the Lakers are going to have to think about more as they get into the postseason, whether that's against Dallas or uh, some of the other opponents that can go small in that sense by having a, a big out on the perimeter. Uh, they did do a pretty good job of that, though, in not allowing those open threes to the pick-and-pop shooters, but again, that, that is something that's on Frank Vogel's radar for when they play teams like that, since the Lakers are so focused on protecting the rim, uh, whether that's JaVale McGee or Dwight Howard at the five spot, or then when they go small, of course, AD sliding over. And Porzingis, with his fourth personal, went to the bench, and LeBron attacked the paint. Nobody better than LeBron James getting to that rim, still doing it at age 35. Great defense right there. Kyle Kuzma on that pick and roll, gets his hand in the passing lane, and Jared Dudley's fouled by Curry. LeBron James second in made layups, 276 of them behind Russell Westbrook of 302. And while we have a moment, let's pause for a word from Carl's Jr. The new Monster Angus Thick Burger at Carl's Jr. Feed your happy. Monster Angus Thick Burger. Looking fantastic. 36-31. Tar Heel right there, big game James. Jackson. Yep. Justin Jackson. Always like to give a little Tar Heel love for big game. Yeah, got a couple Tar Heels out there, you know. Jackson, you know, has not yet found his way in the league up in Sacramento. Uh, before uh, over to Dallas, I believe. He's supposed to be a sharp shooter. I don't think he's yet achieved that consistency yet. To see what he does under Coach Carlisle. Big game. I want to talk about that last play defensively. That's what makes Dwight Howard so good. That's why he won the award three years in a row. He does such, such a great job of not fouling yet, dictating where that shot's going to go and why it's long. Yeah, big men who don't leave their feet and don't go for pump fakes to just kind of wait for you to uh, make your move uh, is what Dwight Howard does very well. There's no secret why he's been uh, a past uh, defensive player of the year uh, because he really has a, a, a great talent for, you know, blocking shots. And if not blocking the shot, he's definitely going to alter the shot to create uh, poor shooting percentages. What a redemption story here in Los Angeles. Dwight Howard, after leaving 2012-13, after one season, departed for Houston. He made his way back after playing for a number of teams, and he has been outstanding. He's been a leader. He's been a great teammate. And he has been the anchor of that second unit. He I covered that team in 2012-13 for the LA Times. And, and Dwight, you know, so much was expected of him coming over. Uh, to the Lakers and he was supposed to be a dominant guy help Kobe get another championship or two before he, he ended up retiring and it just didn't happen uh, the fans fell out of favor with him pretty quickly the truth is he, he had a sore shoulder for, for most if not uh, all that season and his back was hurting him and he was just kind of a, a beat up guy at that point now this season such low expectations it's fun to see 
he's kind of reclaimed uh, a good spot with Laker fans uh, before every game, uh, pre-COVID anyway. He would go into the crowd and take selfies with, with fans and you know, sign autographs, and just having a really good time uh, in, his, in his return, uh, his second tour, if you will, with the Lakers. Boban. Misses a free throw, 39-32 Lakers, second quarter from Orlando. First scrimmage, Dwight can't catch the lob. Hardaway Jr. into the corner, Jackson steps on the line, turnover, Laker basketball. That play gets called a lot in the NBA. You want it there ever widen the court maybe another half a foot to avoid that a lot of stepping out of bounds in those corner shot threes james are you sparking new nba legislation I am trying, i'm trying to you know take responsibility for something <laughs> <right now. laughs> appreciate that james what, what's one of the rules that that really bother you uh, about today's nba maybe it's been on your mind for a while since you were a player what, what, what would be the one thing you would change besides adding a half a foot to the uh, the court dimensions there do you mean actually on the court or uh, any, anything? Anything. Uh, it's, 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 your, some, it's your call. Some, Sometimes these replay, these video replays, you know, get, get in the way of the game sometimes. I, I mean, I know they have to get the call right. Got to get right. But I think the last two minutes or something like that is cool. Uh, but sometimes it screws up the rhythm of the game. And, and the worst thing, it, it, it gets us out of here too late at night sometimes. That's, that's the one thing. <laughs> so you would put a cap on, on the Put a cap on the video. To, to look at. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to see you be able to body check a little bit. Okay. Not hand check. Okay. They've taken that away from the game. And you used to be able to use your forearm arm bar. as long yeah. as you didn't extend it. That's been good defense uh, throughout the NBA. And I think that would, you know, uh, challenge some of these scores who a lot of them, like Harden and Curry, who are untouchable. You can't touch, can't even breathe on them, uh, or it's a foul. So I'd like to see the game get back a little bit to, to where you could, you know, tag them a little bit. LeBron James taking advantage of the mismatch with Jackson, goes right to the hoop, finishes with the left. It's 42-34 Lakers. I just saw some cheerleaders uh, on the side. What was that all about? Was like, that in the video like, board? Like on the screen, they had cheerleaders going. They made me cut them. Look at that. There's the Carl's cam. Rewind, LeBron James, 42-34. Doncic. He's fouled out top. Mike Trudell, you gave Laker fans some sad news on Twitter today. It's just a scrimmage, so there's no panic. But everyone's so excited to see Alice Caruso, always a fan favorite, having such an awesome year, not playing today. Yeah, Chris, so Caruso yesterday at practice uh, just fell on his back and has a contusion there. It's one of those things, as you mentioned, since it's a scrimmage, you're probably going to uh, take the precautious route and not put him out there. Uh, you saw some numbers flash there. Of, of course, part of the reason why uh, people have been so eager to see more of him is he's been the net ratings all-star on this team all season long. In fact, he ranks 11th in the entire NBA, tied with LeBron, in fact, uh, behind basically a bunch of groups composed of Bucks players. Uh, we know what their net rating was like. And, and the combination that he has with LeBron James in particular is something that Frank Vogel has been looking to add to in terms of more minutes together and I'll tell you what that's gonna happen now right I, specifically with Rondo and Bradley out he is the guy that you think of as stepping into that bench role uh, and really being able to float between the one and the two or just completely play off the ball uh, so once that back feels a little better do expect to see plenty of AC fresh moving forward as the Lakers go into the seeding games yeah Doncic with a little fake pass and then gets in the lane gets a bucket Mike just to piggyback off of that Alex Caruso that's the thing you wrote an article about the eye test in advance stats gold I mean that's one thing about Alice Caruso sometimes you look at the at the box score and you don't see much but you look at the plus minus and he's plus 17 the guy is just a winner 
and, and the Lakers recognized that a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, you see it right there, right? Just the, the 17 minutes and the points and, and the field goal percentage. All, none of that stuff is going to pop off of the screen. But if you watch every Laker game, you just notice that they tend to play better when he's on the floor. And that's why, even though uh, Frank Vogel has a lot of options, you've seen Caruso close in a lot of lineups. So specifically, when AD goes to the five, Vogel has brought in Caruso to play next to either KCP or Danny Green. And then, of course, LeBron um, there uh, running things from the point guard position. So it, it is it's something that Frank Vogel has recognized. Caruso's value and we just have to see now if he can expand his game even further now that they're going to need a bit more of that secondary ball handling. KCP Mike had mentioned earlier a rolled ankle he's fine he's in the game loses the jump ball Doncic screen from Boban LeBron doing a nice job mm. oh nice give and go but it's intercepted Lakers doing a nice job of getting their hands in the passing lane. Dwight Howard, up top, bang. Timeout, Dallas, 44-36. Lakers, second best team in the NBA at fast break points, and here's why. LeBron James, Dwight. Thirty-six. LeBron James with another bucket. He has eight points on three of five. He's really attacking here in the second quarter. Big game, James. Peter and you know Michael Jordan, Magic Bird. You know Kobe was definitely and LeBron. It doesn't matter that they're in the bubble or that the season has been disrupted. I'm looking at his face right now. And it looks like he has game seven attitude right now. And I mean, physically, the way he's playing, the way he's getting up and down the floor, relentless, going to the hole with authority. Look at that. Who gives out those type of instructions in a bubble scrimmage game? <laughs> the guy's amazing. You know the last time we saw that? Dennis Rodman teaching us the art of rebounding in that docuseries. Yep. <laughs> pointing, pointing. pointing. I mean, that's locked in, focused. Most of those offensive rebounds he got on me. <laughs> <laughs> Great reference, Allie. The last dance, Dennis Rodman, absolutely phenomenal. Lakers are shooting over 65%, 16 for 24. And you're right, guys. LeBron James is dialed in, and so are the Lakers, 48-36. Jackson gets knocked away. Boban is there, and Boban delivers off the glass. Who's Danny Green, KCP, AD, and LeBron. Backdoor cut along the baseline. What a pass from LeBron James to Kyle Kuzma in the dunk, 50-38. We saw that so much last year, Kuzma's first year with LeBron. That eye contact, that ability for LeBron to just see anyone at any time. Jackson up and in. 10-point lead for the Lakers. A lot of weapons, Geeter, uh, and I think LeBron is smart enough to know that if he can create more weapons, there's the big weapon right there in AD from downtown, but Coos, you know, Waiters, JR, you know, Pope, anybody that can facilitate and, and, and make something happen, LeBron's going to be looking for that type of versatility. Anthony Davis, Brez, in 2020 was shooting over 40% from three. In 2019, it was just 28%. What do you think the biggest difference has been those first few months of 2020? You know, I think it helps. And he had some decent players on his teams in New Orleans, for sure. Drew Holiday, uh, pretty established uh, guard uh, in this league. But when you have a guy like LeBron really kind of taking some heat off of you, it allows you to add to your game, kind of expand that repertoire. And I think that is what we've seen from AD. And some of that, too. I really think, I know you mentioned it earlier, but I, I think uh, AD could be up for a Defensive Player of the Year award, guys. Great screen right there on the replay from Danny Green. As Kuz backdoor, what a pass by LeBron James. And you got to credit Frank Vogel. When AD was missing threes early in that season, he told him he wanted him to keep shooting. Five a game. And now you can see the confidence. As Brez said, you got the playmaker with LeBron James. You got wide open looks. Kuz, confident. I like that, though. I want to see Kuz uh, get very confident. A little bit slow uh, in the last few weeks going into the shutdown. Uh, speaking of confidence, 
How about that? That started with a breakup of a pass, Brez. KCP and LeBron James in transition. Just forget about it, Allie. I mean, look out. He told you. He's ready to destroy anyone who comes in his way. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there were a couple players there that, you know, could have made an attempt. They just got out of the way. Because yeah. when LeBron picks up steam, you, you, there's no stopping him. Big game. It's a scrimmage. Get out of the way. <laughs> I always say it. It's not worth it. Boom. Get out the way. <laughs> great song. I don't blame him at all. I would Peter, too. shout out. Great song. <laughs> Lakers by 11. Kuz. Danny Green, can he get it off in time? Yes. In and out. And that'll do it for the first half from the NBA campus in Orlando with the score at halftime, 55-44. Keep it right here. We'll check in with the Access Sports Net studio for the Jack in the Box halftime report right after this. Welcome back. Before the start of the third, Lakers leading here, 55-44. to 44. The Lakers starting front court, 11 for 15. 73 percent don't let the gray beard fool you lebron james is ready for orlando let's go to mike trudell he wants to talk a little lbj all right so geeter that should be it for the night for lebron james and anthony davis to see coos there likely to start the second half and you know it's one thing to think about lebron and his impact on the court you can see it chris you mentioned the numbers four for six from the field 12 points five assists that that's routine for him you know in 16 minutes of action he just always does that but one thing that's a little cool about this whole uh, experience in the bubble there in orlando you can hear lebron calling out every single defensive assignment for his teammates and that's something that frank vogel remarked about a lot throughout the season LeBron James, of course, he's well known for his all-around game, and in particularly this year, Chris, leading the offense as the point guard. But he also point guards the defense in the sense that he knows everything. He knows other teams' plays. He knows where guys are supposed to be. And that's something that has a lot of value for the team and has really helped them defensively throughout the season. I mean, Mike, so much communication is needed. And look at all great leaders. You look at it in the sport of football, the quarterbacks, uh, linebackers, guys that are calling out plays, uh, constant communication. LeBron James, so good at that, always put Putting everyone in the right situation, the right spots on the floor, and he's motivated, Mike. He's 35 years old. He knows what this means. Uh, he stayed sharp. He stayed in shape. We knew he would, and, and it trickled down. You, you, you see it in every part of the organization. Yeah, and Chris, one of the things that we talked about a lot over these four months, and, and it, it's crazy that it's been four months, right, since we last had the basketball, uh, as Chappelle gets one. Uh, how about that, Mike, right there? Get up Man. and bang it. I mean, so LeBron in his body, right, like he has this calendar, his internal clock, where he knows he's supposed to be peaking at a certain time <laughs> of the season. And that was disrupted this year, and yet and still, we all knew that he was going to find a way to be in the best shape uh, of anybody in Orlando. He, he just knows what to do. He knows his body. He's been working out really hard and, and I think we saw it there in that first half. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point. I mean, LeBron said that. He actually was on Ali's road trip and podcast with Channing Fry and Richard Jefferson during uh, the COVID lockdown and, and he spoke about how people think he's, you know, oh, this is great. LeBron's getting a rest. His, his body's getting used to chilling. And he's like, that, that's not it at all. For me, my body was rounding third. I was getting ready for the playoffs. You talk about that clock. His body knows. Uh, so it was, it was a different uh, you know, unprecedented time for LeBron. Yeah, Javel just finishing around the rim as he's done. Yeah, it's real year. nice. Buddy. Yeah, I mean, Chris, that's the that's the thing with LeBron. I, I almost wonder if both things are true. So, in in the one sense, yes, it, it would have been ideal for him to carry forward that traditional load that he had been building. But at the same time, I, I do think it's kind of nice that he did get a chance uh, to get some additional time off on those legs. And then this is part of the reason why it's nice they're having these three scrimmages. And the Lakers can almost treat the eight seeding games like preseason games in a sense, Geeter, because they don't have to win, you know, most likely uh, to many games to keep their seed. And so they, they can, LeBron can use that time to ramp up as opposed to a team like the Pelicans or the Blazers or the Grizzlies, where, where they're really in kind of win mode in order to try to just get into the postseason. Mike, I want to give you these post all-star numbers for LeBron. 30 points, 9.5 assists, 8.2 rebounds, 55% from the field, 37% from three. Yeah, he was ramping up, and I think this is the thing, 
Chris, that we didn't get to see last year, that if you watched LeBron at his previous stops that were so commonplace, he always built towards that postseason. That was when he played his best basketball. Of course, eight straight trips to the finals. Well, last year, the Lakers were in the four spot around Christmas. That's when he goes down with the groin injury. And then Lonzo gets hurt, Ingram gets hurt, and the whole thing sort of fell apart from there. So Laker fans never got to see LeBron have that ramp up towards the postseason. That's what we were seeing in the games that you mentioned, Chris, after the All-Star break. And it's going to be interesting to see how he uses this next month before the, I think, August 17th is the date that the first round is going to start. Quinn Cook taking over those point guard responsibilities. There's Kuz. Kuz off the pick and roll. Slip screen from Jared Dudley. And he hits the rim, 59-50 here in the second, excuse me, third quarter. Chris McGee, Mike Trudell is with me right now. We also have James Worthy, Ali Clifton, and Mike Bresnan back in the studio. And Mike, Kyle Kuzma will always be a conversation for Laker fans. He's that one holdover from the young Lakers core. And I'm talking back all the way to... Julius Randle, D'Angelo Russell, and you go to Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Larry Nance, Jordan Clarkson. Kuz is the one guy still here, and people so badly want him to be that number three guy. Kuz has had to learn on that great pass to JaVale McGee how to fit with this team and put championship aspirations as the number one goal, and he's done that. Yeah, I, I think it, the Kuzma discussion to me is, is a little bit less complicated, I think, than sometimes it's gotten. Like, the biggest thing is that his minutes went way down because exactly. he has two All-NBA forwards on his team, right? So he, his production, of course, was going to drop as well. His rhythm was going to drop as well, and he's trying to focus on, as Jared Dudley has told us, Chris, multiple times, his defense, his passing, uh, trying to be in the right spots. And, and that he has gotten better. In fact, his defensive rating has gotten considerably better from where it was last year. It was around. Uh, so, like, that's been important, Chris. And we're going to break, 61-52. Mike was talking about the passing. Here's Kuz into the lane, lob it up for JaVale. Got it. And the Lakers leading in Orlando by a score of 61-252. I'm being joined right now by Mike Trudell. And Mike, as we saw, during the suspension of the NBA, a lot going on in our world and especially in our country. You see Black Lives Matter, the message on both sides of the NBA court. And recently, Frank Vogel talked to you a little bit about what the Lakers were doing about social justice by bringing in Dr. Brown. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Uh, Dr. Karita Brown, a terrific professor at UCLA. She was hired as the team's director of racial equity and action back in June. Uh, and this was coinciding with the franchise celebrating Juneteenth. And, you know, look, Dr. Brown's goal really is to help educate the Lakers further in the organization's push towards what they want to call progress on racial and social issues, Chris. And, and it's been something that's, uh, you know, they wanted to make sure they were taking a leadership role in this and not just being a passive uh, participant in all of this. You know, Tim Harris, uh, the president of the Lakers and Jeannie Buss, of course, the owner, were, were really driving this and wanted to find a way to make sure that employees had a chance to, uh, to further their cultural knowledge and their have already been weekly calls um, every Wednesday. Dr. Brown joins uh, the entire staff on a Zoom call. She's had some terrific guest speakers from around the country, a lot of professors and educators and journalists. Um, so it, it's really been eye-opening, and I think that it's it's something that's been very important for the Lakers to uh, not just the players, the staff, uh, and really everybody, Chris, to try to uh, really embrace what's been going on in this movement across the country. Yeah, we appreciate that information, Mike. Great stuff as Quinn Cook hits a layup, and the Mavs come right back. And the score is 65 to 58. I want to get your thoughts, big game, James. You know, you and I have talked on the phone over these past few months about all kinds of issues and social injustices. And I've talked to you and reached out to you. And we've talked about talking to our kids and, and, and what that means. And, and you mentioned this on the pregame show, uh, uh, educating our youth. So big game, go ahead and jump in there. sweep history under the rug and not teach it in high school and, and elementary school. I think that is a big problem. Uh, and, you know, because of videos now, we're, we're, we're understanding uh, the history. You know, obviously, uh, all lives matter. But I think in, in the case of what we've seen with the brutality uh, on film, you know, I was, I was here with Rodney King. 
I myself, you know, in the you know in the in the, in the early seventies, integrated elementary school. It was a, it was a tough time, and we need to talk about it. And I think finally, and I mean finally, I think the platform is there for us to have a diverse conversation and you know make things better amongst us. Big game. If you had a chance to talk to Kareem, we had him. Uh, in studio for an interview and Kareem just always uh, so knowledgeable and always so great to talk to um, all of his work dating back to Martin Luther King Jr. and his first time protesting on the campus of UCLA. Yeah, he was in the famous photo with uh, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Bill Russell, uh, you know, some, some great athletes who were all about uh, economic empowerment back in the the late 60s. So uh, when I came here uh, to Los Angeles, I was lacking about 15 hours to graduate. And Kareem was one of my tutors on the back of the bus in the hotel. If you talk to him about history or anything that deals with, uh, you know, being an activist, he will talk to you for hours and hours and introduce you to books that he's read. Uh, he's, a, he's, he's a walking encyclopedia when it comes to history and, and these type of issues. Appreciate your thoughts there, James. 67-61, Lakers leading just over four minutes here in the third quarter. Seth Curry has been fantastic for the Mavs. 19 points and seven for seven shooting, five for five from three. J.J. Barea. Another three, this one short for Dallas, Dion Waiters. Waiters only played in three games this year for Miami. And Waiters hits the 17-footer, 69-61. That gives Waiters seven points. <clears throat> three ball in the corner is good. Tim Hardaway Jr. played at Michigan. He has been great for this Dallas team, especially over the last 20 games as Kuz gets a much-needed shot for the Lakers. 72-64. Curry again. Brez, Steph, excuse me, Seth Curry, shooting like Steph Curry, six for six. From three, he is second in the NBA in three-point percentage at over 45%. He is just fantastic today. 67-72, uh, Dallas right back in it, trailing by five. Yeah, easy to get those two brothers uh, confused today, isn't it? Uh, you know, Seth has had a really remarkable, kind of an under-the-radar season for the Mavs. And no doubt about it, you know, Porzingis and Luka Doncic are the reason why the Mavs are in the seventh seed right now. But you have to have some good support, too. And Curry and Boban are two of those guys who have really stepped up right now. See Kyle Kuzma hitting that shot. On the replay, Mike Trudell and I were talking about Kuz, and, and Mike brought up a great point, a point that I feel I'm always speaking to when I speak to Laker fans about Kuz as a starter. Waiters three off the mark. Uptick in minutes. When he plays the minutes and gets the shots, you see the numbers go up. Yeah, Geeter, last season he had 39 points in a game in Philadelphia. He had 41 points uh, against Detroit. He, he was the rising star as MVP. He's got some skills. Let's not forget it. We're going to break. Lakers clinging to a two-point lead. Dion Waiters. Welcome to the Lakers. He has nine points. Presented by Nissan. Two more scrimmages to go. The Magic, 9 a.m. on July 25th and Monday the 27th versus the Wizards at noon. You can see them both right here on Spectrum Sportsnet. And then it begins Thursday, July 30th. Lakers, Clippers followed on Saturday by the Raptors and then the Jazz on the third. Remember, the Lakers will play eight seeding games to get ready for the playoffs. Deion Waiters for the first time in a Laker uniform. Lakers leading 72 to 70. Deion Waiters with nine points on three of five shooting. One for three from three. Story of the third quarter has been the Dallas Mavericks and red hot shooting. Seth Curry, six for six from three. 
three of those here in the third. Mavs 10 for 23 overall from deep. Hardaway Jr. Last 10 games before the break, averaged 20 points per game. Came over in that Kristaps Porzingis trade from New York. J.R. Smith dumps it back to Dwight. He fumbles it. Boban blocks it. Jump ball called. So, Allie, we get our first look at J.R. Swish. I mean, they don't nickname him Swish for nothing, right? There's reasons. Get ready for some... Long three balls from J.R. Smith, but the other thing we have to remember with him, again, he hasn't played in an NBA game since November of 2018. That's going to make a big difference. Yep. Because no matter how much he's kept himself in shape, not being, even in practices, can stymie your game. So his experience will bring him forth a little quicker, I think. And to that point, James, we talked to him one-on-one -on -one the other day, and he's in physically great shape came in prepared mentally he says he's he's ready to go he's locked in couldn't be happier um, but he did say when it comes to getting down the terminology on the defensive end of the floor and understanding the schemes it was going to take him some time and i think these scrimmage games are awesome an awesome opportunity for him to kind of develop that probably more beneficial to someone like him than anybody who's been out of the game as you said ali since 2018 there's a lot of defensive principles that change in a season that he's been away from. So just being out of the practice habit uh, can, can, is enough to, you know, have to catch up. 612 days since his last NBA game. I did the math earlier. Not, not right now. <laughs> and Maxi Kleba ties it up at 72. And you're looking at Talon Horton Tucker, THT, 46th overall pick in the 2019 draft. His first shot off the mark, but it's nice to see him in the game for the Lakers. Chris, Frank Vogel had some nice words about uh, THT when he was talking about him last week, saying he looks good. Like He, he has really done well in, in these practice situations in the bubble so far. Yeah, THT playing for the South Bay Lakers. They do such a great job developing Laker talent, as we've seen over the last few years. Alex Caruso front and center on that list. Joey Buss, Kobe Carl, everyone involved. THT just played in two games for the Lakers, five minutes overall, still looking for his first points. But for South Bay, he was averaging over 18 points, over six rebounds and four assists. Allie had mentioned Deion Waiters maybe picking up some ball handling responsibilities. You see him kicking it out to JR. Swish. Almost big game. THT not afraid. Kuz, offensive rebound. Lakers down by one. I feel like Kuz, right before the All-Star All -Star break, really started to improve his rebounding. I feel like he was thinking, okay, not getting as much attention or, or as many opportunities on offense, I should say. And he really tried to do other things, played some good D, and really uh, pushed up his offensive rebounding numbers. Boban, Marjanovic. You know, Brez, another thing with Kuz is, you know, talent without principles and theory doesn't last long in this league. I mean, you can play, but I think he finally, you know, submitted to um, learning the principles of the game. Like you said, getting offensive rebounds, finding other ways to be great, because we know what he can do offensively. And a nice pass by THT, but Dwight unable to convert the dunk. End of the third quarter, the Mavs on a 27-13 run. They lead the Lakers. We'll be back as you see the messaging on the shoes. Team run, they lead the Lakers by three. No AD and LeBron here in the second half. I want to bring in Mike Trudell. One thing the Lakers will be looking for, ball handling responsibilities, running that second unit without Rajon Rondo. What are your thoughts, Mike? 
Yeah, Chris, so we know that it was six to eight weeks was the time frame that we had originally when Rondo uh, got hurt and had the surgery shortly thereafter. We know that he's not there in Orlando, so it's probably closer come this weekend to about four to six weeks, and Frank Vogel did expect that if the Lakers are playing at that point, too, that he would get him back into the lineup. But yeah, secondary ball handling, that is the thing that Rondo did the most of. You see Deion Waiters there creating a play for Dwight Howard. That is one thing that Frank Vogel is excited about the prospect of seeing, because Deion can take players off the dribble. He can get into the paint again, as you just saw. So that's one option. You also have Quinn Cook, who just had a shot of him on the bench. And then Caruso has done some of the playmaking there with the second unit. Now, here's the other thing, though. LeBron James is going to have the ball in his hands for much of the game, especially in high-level playoff moments. And it doesn't just have to be guards either, Chris, that fill in for Rondo. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast that could be Anthony Davis having some more possessions once they get to the half court. That could mean Kyle Kuzma, who can certainly create off the dribble and get his own shot. So they have a lot of different guys that you can see it, and it's probably going to be more of a committee uh, than just one player whose focus is like Rondo's, which does seem to be primarily uh, to be a passer. Mike, I think you bring up a great point. When people ask me who's going to be the backup point guard, I say, well, in the playoffs, you got to remember LeBron's going to have that ball for about 38, 39 minutes a game. Yeah, and there's nowhere else that you'd rather have the basketball, right? Like, like any lineup that you look at, if LeBron is on the court, you want him to have the ball. Uh, and J.R. Smith there making a little play. So you know, LeBron's mastery of NBA offense is such, Chris, that he, he's just an offense all onto himself. Uh, that's what he's done. He leads the whole entire league in assists uh, this season. But there are times also where you don't want him to have to carry the full load as a playmaker because there are other times where he's such an effective scorer. He's so effective going to the basket that you do want to give him some help there. And that's why I think these seeding games coming up, in addition to the scrimmages, are going to be important just to see who else can establish a bit of a niche, uh, niche in terms of setting up plays when LeBron is either on the floor and you don't want him to or when LeBron is getting his rest. Mike, congratulations. I know it's just a scrimmage, but the Laker players are happy. Devontae Kaycock gets his first two points with the big club the rookie out of UNC Wilmington that's a nice moment Mike yeah I mean KCOC can play okay if you watch the South Bay Lakers and I know a lot of Laker fans got a chance to uh, this season he can play basketball you, you talk to some of the Laker players they're aware of it because he was really good in training camp and that's a guy who Frank Vogel could call on and, and maybe there's another one Taylor Horton Tucker and there's his first two points back to back KCOC and then THT and the fellas are loving it and by the way, that all started because of the defense and the rim protection from Dwight Howard, something he has done all year long for this Laker defense. That's why they're third in defensive rating. Lakers now lead by two. Deion Waiters throws it up. Kaycock. Look at JaVale McGee going nuts in the background. That's what I love about this Laker team, how much they pull for each other. Mavericks fire three, miss, Boban, and Boban's teammates love it. A Boban. His 11th rebound, 10th point, four for six from the field, 81-81. Waiters. There's Dwight in the post. Foul by J.R. Smith. We're all tied up at 81. Lakers will play Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Pre-game show at 8.30. Have a little brekkie, coffee, and join us. Brez, what are you bringing for everyone that morning? You know, I'll be bringing a uh, nice collection of pastries for everyone. I believe okay. it's my turn to bring in food. Uh, might uh, have a little omelet bar as well. I know you're a big fan of the uh, the Denver omelet, so we'll uh, love that uh, done for you. Not, not too into buffets right now, Mike, but that's okay. I appreciate <laughs> the uh, thought and the effort. <laughs> It'll be a social wait distance a few more months. omelet bar. <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> Lakers trail by two, J.R. Smith back out to Kaycock. He's going to shoot a three, Dwight. Maxi Kleba deflects it off of Dwight's leg, so it's Dallas ball. 
James, you got to think from this point on, Coach Carlisle and Coach Vogel just want to stay healthy and get some guys some run and get out of there. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You Boban! Know, no Sorry. injuries. Boban. Sorry, James, I got excited. Boban! I did too. <laughs> he's, a, he's an exciting player in great shape. Yeah, you know, Gita, I think, you know, first scrimmage, you're not looking for too much. Just uh, guys getting familiar with each other, getting them down the court, getting in shape. THT with the rebound. And he's excited. Boban from long range. Boban's got 15. Dallas leads by five. I'm Marie LeBron James, full steam ahead. 12 points on four of six, five assists, light work in 15 minutes. Anthony Davis, five of seven, one for three from three. Back it in, hit the J, 12 points they combine for 24. And the Laker bench, welcome to Waiters Island. Deion Waiters, three for seven with nine points. 36 points off the bench, seven different Lakers scoring. You see Deion Waiters. And Big game, James, I want to bring you in. Not bad for a debut. 14 minutes, three for seven. Also, as Ali pointed out, showed the Lakers and their fans he can handle the basketball. Hey, look, we're going to need him. You know, here's a guy who's a proven uh, shot maker, not afraid to take the big shots. And there are going to be times that we're going to need that creativity. And on top of that, once he can break down the defense a little bit, the ability to distribute the basketball is going to be vital, especially until we get Rondo back or we might need that second ball handler in the game. So as you see, you know, pretty good, 3 or 7 from the field and uh, has proven in, you know, himself in an early scrimmage game. Justin Jackson out of North Carolina gets the floater in the lane, 88-81. Quinn Cook in the game with J.R. Smith, THD, Dwight, and Devontae Kaycock, and right there, J.R. sees Dwight Howard for the alley-oop. Maxi Kleba. He can hit that. Good young three. He can block some shots, hit some threes. Another part of Dallas is a young, bright future. Dallas Mavericks definitely building for the future as we see this alley-oop one more time. Great recognition in the role in the setup by Dwight. Peter, we talked earlier about kind of Dwight's season of redemption. We talked about him off the court, how he's been like really uh, friendly with fans pre-COVID, really wanted to kind of reach out and, and almost like a my bad. Let's, let's have a re retake, a, re a redo of 2012-13. But on the court, he, he, he's been great for the guys. A very good uh, offensive rebounder and uh, scorer, too. We're going to break. 5.50 left in the game. Dallas leading the Lakers 91-83. Career, there he is, dropping it off for JaVale McGee and then getting into the lane and finishing. And what about that? Backdoor lob to Kyle Kuzma. LeBron James, 12 points, 4 of 6, 5 assists. 15 minutes of action. Frank Vogel telling the media before the game, you will only see LeBron and AD in the first half. And if you're a Laker fan or part of this Laker organization, you have to be real happy with what you saw from this Laker team in the first half. Shooting over 65% from the field. Defending. Lakers down 91-83. THT on the floor. Matsukumpo on the floor. He gets his rebound, and he's fouled. Back to LeBron for a minute. You know, I really like what he's done with his game this season. All right, he's a few months away from turning 36. I think we all are aware of that. But I like how he's added the, the passing element. He's always been a really good passer, don't get me wrong. But of the many things he's done in his NBA career, he has never led the league in assists. That will happen, it, it, barring a, a, a stunning turnaround in the eight regular season games. So he's not, you know, revolutionizing his game, but he's kind of tinkering with it a little bit and saying, hey, I'm going I'm to look to pass a little bit more this season than ever uh, in all my previous years. Costas Antetokounmpo 
brother of Giannis at the line. Remember the South Bay Lakers, averaging 15 points and eight rebounds a game. He's played in three games for the Lakers, still looking for his first points. Quinn Cook also in the lineup with J.R. Reed. Justin Jackson. Good defense by Kaycock. He was the CAA Conference Defensive Player of the Year when he was in college. THT to the rack. Yeah. Lay it up and in. <laughs> Mike Trudell, Frank Vogel recently raving about THT and what he's been able to do with his body, getting in shape, and with that has come confidence. THT again, this time just misses. The up and under with the left. And Mavericks take advantage on a leak out, 93-85. That crowd is really good. <laughs> You're enjoying it, aren't you, James? Yeah, you listen to the game, you hear the, 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 uh, the, the sneakers squeaking, and it sounds like it's 20,000 people in there. Pretty cool. You know, big game, I think that's been a, a big topic since the beginning of the restart when they got to Orlando, what would it look like? The intrigue behind hearing the players and coaches, will there be crowd noise? Who has the advantage not feeding off a, a home crowd? Is it a veteran team? Is it a young team? All those coming into play. It's going to be so different, James. Unprecedented times for our entire country and world, not just the NBA. Yeah, and, and I, think, uh, I think veteran teams definitely have the, the advantage, you know, preparation, uh, you know, discipline. Uh, but, you know, Geeter, I know in my time, whenever I got a big dunk or something or a big defensive play, you know, that, that response from the crowd kind of pumps you up. You know, if you're tired, it gives you that extra energy that you need. So I don't know quite what it's going to feel like for these guys getting an artificial crowd, but nevertheless... Big game. It sounds good from here. Yeah, big game. Let's keep it real. We're talking 80s Showtime era, the Forum, the Forum <laughs> Club. Are you kidding me? Thank you, you can't match that. You can't match it, especially the Forum Club, Peter. Imagine you diving on the sideline in game six in 87 and there's no crowd. No response. <laughs> Might be upset. Yeah, still haven't added quite all the game elements yet. Uh, for this game, there was no player introductions beforehand. There was no national anthem. That'll be the same for the next two scrimmages, but then they will gradually add those elements and some more time on the clock as well. Only, only 10 minute quarters tonight, but for these second and third scrimmages, it'll be 12 minute quarters. Quinn Cook did not play in 11 of the Lakers' last 20 games. He has a ring when he played for Golden State. He's been to two finals as a member of that Warrior squad. He is one of the most well-liked guys, not just on the Lakers, but in the entire league. Born and raised a Laker fan. His dad who passed away, Quinn was younger, was a huge Laker fan. Bobon. Somewhere Tobias Harris is looking and smiling. His former best friend. I think he misses him. He does. Just a little. Now that Luca and Bobon are having so much fun on Instagram. <laughs> He's a little left out, doesn't he? That's sad. I got to say, Allie and Brez, you know, Allie, we, we talked about this for months, literally, on every show we did during suspended play. Will it happen? What's your confidence level? So many times we thought it just wasn't going to be possible. Props to the NBA, the owners, the players for getting this done. And, and here we are, Allie. It's happening. The Lakers are playing basketball. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. It really is. And it's, it's a kudos to the league and how detailed they were with every step of this process. It, and it just goes to show another thing that I saw on social media leading up to these scrimmages starting, um, but we're seeing it here live now watching it, is the distancing, the spacing between players on the bench and coaches, them having their own little stations that allow them to have the water, the towels, the mouth guard placement, all of that. It all plays a part. It's all what is going to ultimately make this thing be successful. It's what we've all wanted, and it's what they tirelessly worked so hard to accomplish. 
And, and again, we're just in day two of scrimmages, but things look to be flawless. The players look to be comfortable. And it's all you could have expected and asked for. Yeah, and medically speaking, I, I would add to that. A few weeks ago when the players were tested individually in their hometowns, uh, you know, it was about a 6 7% positivity rate for, uh, for COVID. Then they brought everyone into the bubble. Uh, right away, it was down to half of 1%. And then in the most recent testing, almost 350 players were tested. Not one showed signs of having COVID. So, so some amazing numbers there as well. The gradual decrease of players testing positive. It's good to show you that Commissioner Silver, you know, he took it serious from the beginning. It could have been easy for him to go ahead and play those, those games that were in progress or about to start. But he shut it down quickly and educated the entire league and the communities about being safe and the reopening of the NBA took some more serious conversations with doctors and you know I'm sure people from CDC and things like that just to see how they could do it and you see right there they got the plexiglass up at the scores table in the bubble players seem to be very comfortable and so you know hats off to the NBA for how they attack this and, and how they're handling it uh, down there in, in the bubble concur with all three of you as you see the distance seating there's Christophs Porzingis James had mentioned the plexiglass as the referees review the clear path foul so the Mavericks will shoot free throws and retain possession Lakers next scrimmage July 25th Saturday morning 9 a.m. we'll have the pregame show for you at 8:30. Coming up after this, if you missed anything, Ali, Brez, big game, doing the post game. We'll show you highlights, break it all down for you. How did LeBron and AD look? Everything. That's ahead of you in three minutes and 35 seconds. Boban having himself a game with 17. Look at THT. Great shot fake, unable to convert it. Such valuable minutes and opportunities for the South Bay Lakers. THT, Antetokounmpo, Kaycock. It's great to see these guys with the big club. JR, and one. And his teammates are happy because JR hasn't scored since when, Allie? Brez, anybody? When's November the last time he played? 19, 2018, 2018, we think. 612 days since his last NBA game. Dwight loves it. <laughs> That's first cross roll. Uh, <clears throat> Alec, <laughs> did you get me to call you? You were locked in. <laughs> Trudell, you still with me? Uh, Mike Trudell's busy. Is anybody in there? Mike Bresley is here if you need him. Hey, Bres. Yeah, we're doing a social distance broadcast. It's been a lot of fun, guys. I'm out in the trailer. We call it the Fiji, Fiji room. Mike Trudell joining us now. He's in the green room. That's where he will be for all the games, providing the sideline reporting. Billy and Stu will be in the room that I'm in right now. And Mike, it's been a lot of fun, actually, and checking out everyone's Instagrams. You know, JaVale McGee's done a great job and seeing what these guys are doing in the bubble. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is a group of guys that genuinely likes each other uh, and is when you thought about them originally all going down and being in this bubble concept uh, at least i from talking to a lot of these guys knew they, they were excited about all this time they were going to get to spend together and i know that it might be different for every team depending on what their championship aspirations are but this is a squad that from lebron on down to the end of the roster uh, every time we go to a road city they'd be going to dinner together uh, the or organizing movies events bowling uh, all
all kinds of stuff as Kaycock gets into the action. So uh, that was one thing, Chris, that you felt good about this squad going down there because it, it's a real genuine thing. And I do think you see that play out on the court. LeBron is the ringleader. Um, he's the one that's posting most in their group text thread along with Jared Dudley and Kyle Kuzma. Uh, those, those are the guys that I heard were the MVPs of the group chat. But yeah, man, that, that's something that's been really uh, prominent on this squad. And I think it's been helping the way that they play together on the floor. Yeah, the background, you see Markeith Morris. He is now with the team and the are Lakers are happy about that you know Mike it's 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 interesting too you know for a lot of these guys when in their lives of being a professional athlete are they just going to be in one spot for two to three months with one thing to do and that's hoop it's it's really unprecedented there's no question it's just never happened before and you know I think there there even if you think about the other sports that are going around in Europe uh, European soccer they've been in their home stadium still right so this concept hasn't really existed in that format and the good news is that led by LeBron again led by AD and you're taking a look at Morris there the mission has been very clear and LeBron and Frank Vogel too are very good about just keeping these guys focused on what's in front of them directly so all they're thinking about right now after this game is the next scrimmage game and then they go from that to the third scrimmage game so they're not worried yet about you know, who they're going to match up with in the first round yeah uh, it's been a just take what's in front of you mindset and everybody says that in team sports chris but we have seen that be more effective for the lakers this year and i like the playoff process mike i like that it's four out of seven i like that there are no gimmicks the one addition they did is awesome it's the nine seed if you're within four games being down 1-0 and having a chance to win two in a row to grab that eight seed. I think that's going to add some excitement, some intrigue. We've never seen it before, and especially if you're a Laker fan and you hang on to that one seed, five-and-a-half game lead with eight to go, you're most likely going to play that eight. And who's it going to be? Right now it looks like Memphis, but, hey, how about Portland getting healthy, looking awfully good? New Orleans at full strength. Sacramento. Could be any of those teams. Could be a lot of fun. Yeah, you're right, and you honestly won't know, right, until it, it gets down to it, and, and that gives some Laker fans and really every NBA fans out there a chance to focus on some of those games uh, that are coming, especially towards the end of these seeding action, because you, you're not going to know who you're going to play um, if you're the Lakers, and that just leads back to that whole mindset of preparing on what you can control yourself. Uh, and once it becomes evident, though, Chris, if those teams do have to play the playoff games, they'll be the, day, the two days before the first round of the playoffs. So that's one little advantage that the first round team, or the first seed, I should say, would have over somebody potentially playing in to get to that game. 103-95, Dallas leading with one minute and 47 seconds left. Reminding everybody that you will see the rest of the scrimmages right here on Spectrum Sportsnet. That is 9 a.m. on Saturday noon on Monday, and then the real thing starts July 30th, next Thursday, week from today. Lakers, Clippers. Many believe I was one of them back in March that the Clippers and Lakers were on a crash course to play each other, Mike, in the Western Conference Finals. Everyone thought Bucks, Lakers, Clippers, the three teams with a legit chance to win. The crazy thing about this, no one knows now. It's four and a half months later. Team could get hot. Yeah. There's no, there's no question about that, Chris, and, and I think that it, it probably opens the field a bit more. Uh, you're looking at the Western Conference there. Uh, we'll see what Houston's able to put together, right, with that unique style that they're going to play, uh, going small, not really playing centers. Is that something that can catch a team uh, in round two, say? Um, is that something that they're going to wear down as they had started to in the regular season? We don't know. Uh, but, but again, the Lakers, all they can really focus on right now is staying healthy, and, and that's what Frank Vogel's in their staff and, and Rob Palinka and everybody wanted to make sure they had all of their medical people on site and, and that's the, the benefit that they have when you see that five and a half game lead like they, that's the biggest thing Chris because one injury and you'll knock on wood for every team but one injury could make such a big difference once it gets down to the bubble as the things advance yeah I look at that Western Conference as they review who the ball went out of bounds on and you see the Clippers in that bench with Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, part of that starting unit, their first year together, what they've been able to do. Denver uh, getting to a game seven in the second round last year. Jokic, Jamal Murray, Houston, as you mentioned, Westbrook and Harden, how dangerous they could be in this setting in a seven-game series. Oklahoma City, one of the hottest teams over the last few months in the league. 
A team like Portland making it to the Western Conference Finals. No one's even talking about them right now. They got Zach Collins and Nurkic back. And they got a guy named Dame Time. Around the back, JR. Onto Takumpo with his bucket. And the Lakers climbed within six. Costas has five points. Block called on Costas. So the South Bay Lakers plus JR and Quinn Cook battling. Trying to get back in this. And if you miss this, check the re-air tonight on Spectrum Sportsnet. As we take a look at JR's play. Oh, he plays defense too, Ali James and Brez. A little behind the back. He can hit threes, and he's, he's pretty high up on some of these uh, steals lists for some of the career guys. He's, uh, he's logged a lot of time. It's, it's easy to forget that, but uh, he's pretty good at quite a few things. 13th all-time in threes made, 1,929, J.R. Smith. And just like October, guys, when it's the preseason, I'm already ready for the real thing. <laughs> well, Gita, you know, uh, this will be our first time in the playoffs in some time. So. Oh, man. Big game, James. Eight years together. Yeah. I have a special drink for you. I uh, bet you do. We tip off the first playoff game. I bet you do. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and, and let me just say this, James. I'm all in. THT getting his hands on the ball, strips it from Boban. Lakers are down five with 28 seconds. JR's going to shoot a three. Rich. And he makes it, and the Lakers are down just two. Who says it's only a scrimmage and you don't care? <laughs> Lakers foul. They're going to send right to the line. Frank Vogel, probably thinking, I don't really want overtime, but I wouldn't mind a couple of misses here in a three. Let's show JR's three. Boban just to go ahead and shoot it. We're good. JR Smith, now one for four from three. By the way, Dallas with a four point lead. He is ninth all time in threes in the playoffs. Lakers Only are going to call timeout. Frank Vogel going over situations here. Down four, 18 seconds. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a moment as Vogel draws up a play, try to get a quick score, get the ball back. To Quinn Cook, reminder stick around if you're watching Spectrum Sportsnet right now. <laughs> Post game show coming up next. So hear from the Lakers and Vogel. Yeah, talk to Ali, Brez, big game. Quinn Cook down two, five seconds. And that's going to do it for the first scrimmage for the Lakers here on the NBA campus in Orlando. And Dallas will win 108 to 106. Oh, maybe that didn't count. 108, 104. Everyone's walking out of there healthy. That's a good sign. Anthony Davis, 12 points in 15 minutes. Danny Green saying hello. Bobon with a great game for Dallas. 17 points off the bench. Leading the way for Dallas, Seth Curry. Six for six from three and 23 points. For James, Ali, Brez, Mike, I'm Chris McGee saying so long. Be sure to catch our next telecast Saturday at 9 a.m. when the Lakers take on the magic. Access Sportsnet Lakers presented by your Southern California Honda dealers with big game. Ali and Brez starts right now. Boom, 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 boom.